Welcome to this series on overcoming overeating addiction using a powerful method called AVRT. If you are someone who struggles with overeating or just can't seem to control food cravings, you are in the right place. We are going to dive deep into AVRT and explore how it can help you break free from the cycle of food addiction, one step at a time. AVRT stands for Addictive Voice Recognition Technique. It was originally developed by Jack Trimpey in early 90s as a method to help people overcome alcohol and drug addiction. Trimpey's focus was on recognizing and separating what he called the addictive voice, that little voice inside our heads that tells us to give in to cravings, whether it's alcohol, drugs, or in this case, food. The basic idea behind AVRT is simple. It teaches you to recognize the voice of your addiction and realize that you are not that voice. Instead, it's a learned part of your brain that wants to keep feeding the addiction. Once you can identify and separate that voice, you can begin to shut it down. Originally, AVRT was used by people who wanted to quit drinking or using drugs, but we are going to apply this same technique to overeating. The principles are the same because whether it's alcohol or food, the addictive voice follows the same pattern. It tricks you into believing that you need to give in. Now it's time to dive deeper into recognizing the addictive voice, the voice that convinces you to give in to cravings. Even when you know you shouldn't. Let's start by doing a little exercise together. I want you to say this sentence out loud. I will never over it again and I will never change my mind. I will never over it again and I will never change my mind. Now pay close attention to what happens right after you say that. What thoughts come up? What emotions do you feel? Maybe you hear something like, that's impossible, I can't do it, I can't commit to it forever. Maybe you feel a little anxious or nervous. All of those thoughts and feelings are part of your addictive voice. That's the voice we're going to learn to recognize and separate from the real you. This voice will try to trick you, to make you feel powerless and convince you that you can't live without overeating. But that's not true. The real you, or the part that wants to stop overeating, is not the same as the voice. Once you can see the difference between the two, you will be able to take control. The more you practice, the more you will be able to identify the addictive voice when it starts to creep in. Now say this sentence again. I will never overeat again and I will never change my mind. I will never over it again and I will never change my mind. Throughout this recording, we will repeat this sentence many times to bring up the addictive voice. Now pay attention to see what thoughts come up in your mind. Listen to the tone of the voice. The addictive voice often sounds very persuasive. It might say things like, just one more time won't hurt. You've had a tough day. You deserve to treat yourself. You can always start tomorrow. Notice how this voice makes excuses, tries to manipulate or make overeating seem necessary. This voice is always looking for the easiest way out, convincing you to give in. But your true self, the part of you that wants to be healthy and in control, doesn't make excuses. Your real voice is calm, rational and clear. It knows what's best for you and doesn't try to trick you. The addictive voice often brings up strong emotions like anxiety, fear or guilt. When you make a decision to stop overeating, these emotions will come up. For example, after saying I will never overeat again and I will never change my mind, you might feel a wave of panic or discomfort thinking that, can I really do this? What if I fail again? That's the addictive voice. It stirs up emotions to make you feel like stopping is impossible. But your true self doesn't react that way. 
Your real self feels more at peace with the decision to stop, even if it's challenging. The addictive voice is very focused on immediate gratification. It wants you to feel good right now. It will tell you things like, just eat this now and worry about the consequences later. You can always quit tomorrow. But your true self thinks about the long term. It, it's focused on your overall well-being, not just the temporary pleasure of food. When you hear the voice pushing you to act on impulse, know that it's not the real you. It's the addictive voice. One of the most effective ways to separate the addictive voice is to label it whenever it speaks up. When you hear thoughts that try to convince you to overeat, mentally say, that's not me, that's the addictive voice. For example, if you hear the thought that I deserve to have this extra snack, immediately say to yourself, that's not me, that's just the addictive voice. This simple act of labeling Help you create distance between the craving and your true self. The more you practice separating yourself with the addictive voice, the better you will be able to identify it and separating it from yourself. Once you do that, you can take back your control and start making decisions based on what you really want, not what the addictive voice wants. Let's take a step back and understand how we developed an overeating addiction in the first place. Overeating is not something that just appeared out of nowhere. For many of us, it started a long time ago, often in childhood. Maybe food was used as a reward or comfort when we were sad. Or we watched our parents turn to food to cope with their stress and we learned to do the same thing. Over time, these emotional responses to food became deeply ingrained habits. Many of us use food as a way to manage our emotions. When we feel sad, anxious, or even bored, eating becomes a quick way to feel better. At least for a moment. It's not just about physical hunger, but emotional hunger. And when we turn to food to deal with those emotions over and over again, it becomes a habit. As children, we might have been given treats to cheer us up or we learn that food is how we celebrate, comfort ourselves or deal with stress. These patterns shape the way we see food and how we use it to manage our emotions. But what started as a way to feel better has now become a habit, a routine that kicks in whenever certain triggers appear. You feel stressed, you over it. You are bored, you over it. And it feels like you can't control it. So let's see how habits are formed. It all starts with something called the habit loop, which has three parts. The first part is a trigger. This is the situation or emotion that kicks off the habit. It could be feeling stressed, sad, bored, or even seeing a specific type of food. The next part is routine, the action you take in response to the trigger, in this case overeating or grabbing something to snack on, even when you are not hungry. And the third part is reward. This is the feeling you get after overeating. Maybe it's a sense of comfort, pleasure or relief from stress. This reward is what keeps the cycle going. Every time we go through this loop, which is trigger, routine, and reward, the habit gets stronger. The brain learns to associate food with feeling good, even if if it's only temporarily. Now let's talk about why the addictive voice exists and why it keeps pushing you to over it, even when you don't want to. This is where dopamine comes into play. Dopamine is a chemical in the brain that makes us feel good. It is released when we do something that our brain sees as rewarding, like eating something delicious. Every time you eat something you enjoy, especially foods high in sugar, fat or salt, your brain releases a surge of dopamine, which creates that pleasurable feeling. Over time, your brain starts to expect this dopamine rush 
whenever you think about eating. This is why the addictive voice exists. It's your brain's way of trying to get that dopamine hit. It tells you to eat because it wants to feel that pleasure again, even if it's only temporary. But here's the catch. The more you give in to this voice and overeat, the less sensitive your brain becomes to dopamine. This means you need to eat more and more to get the same level of satisfaction. The good news is that you can break this cycle. Now that you understand how habits form and how dopamine fuels the addictive voice, the next step is to bring awareness to your eating habits. When you hear the voice in your head that says, go ahead, have a little more, or you can always start eating healthy tomorrow. It might feel strong, but here's the truth. It's just noise. The addictive voice might sound convincing, but it can't actually move you or chew for you or grab food. It doesn't have control over your body or your decisions. The only thing the addictive voice can do is talk. That's it. It's like static in the background. It's there, but it doesn't have any power unless you decide to act on it. The addictive voice originates from a part of your brain called the midbrain, or more specifically, an area called the limbic system. The midbrain is one of the most primitive parts of our brain, and its job is to keep us alive by responding to basic needs like food, water, and safety. The midbrain doesn't think in complex ways. It's all about immediate gratification and survival. When you feel a craving, that's your midbrain sending signals, telling you to eat because in its simple view, food equals survival. It doesn't care about long-term consequences or your health. It just wants that quick fix of pleasure. But here's what's important to understand. The midbrain can only send signals. It can create the urge or the cravings, but it cannot control your actions. That's where another part of your brain comes into play. The part of your brain that actually moves you makes decisions and control your actions is called the prefrontal cortex. This is the part of your brain that handles planning, self-control, and making choices. It's located right at the front of your brain, behind your forehead, and it's much more evolved than the midbrain. When you're thinking about what's best for you, making long-term plans, and choosing to stay healthy, That's your prefrontal cortex working. That's where your real power lies. It's the part of you that can override cravings, ignore the addictive voice, and make decisions based on what's truly important to you. So the next time you hear the addictive voice telling you to over it, remember that the voice is coming from the midbrain, which only wants quick rewards. But you, the real you, are in charge of your decisions. Because your prefrontal cortex is the one that makes things happen. Based on what we learned so far, here's how you can respond when the addictive voice speaks up. First, recognize the voice. Label it as the midbrain talking. Then remind yourself that the voice has no real power over you. It's just a signal. Finally, use your prefrontal cortex, the decision-making part of your brain, to choose a different response. You can decide not to act on the cravings. The midbrain may suggest you to overeat, but only your prefrontal cortex can actually make it happen. And since you have full control over your prefrontal cortex, that means you have the power to make the right decision for yourself. AVRT is not about controlling yourself or using willpower to resist the urge to overeat. AVRT gives you the awareness that allows you to recognize what's really going on. It's not about suppressing the cravings or trying to force yourself into a diet you can't sustain. It's about knowing that the addictive voice is there, 
but also knowing that you are in charge. Unlike dieting, ABRT is not asking you to restrict yourself or battle through hunger with sheer willpower. ABRT says, here's what's really happening in your brain. It helps you to realize that the cravings are not part of you, but just signals from the primitive part of the brain we talked about earlier. Diets make you feel like you're constantly at war with food. You have to control your portions, avoid certain things, and constantly say no to yourself. But ABRT takes a completely different approach. It's about recognizing that you don't have to struggle, because the battle is happening in your mind, not with food. With ABRT, the moment you identify the addictive voice, you have already won. It's not about fighting a battle or trying to suppress your cravings. It's about recognizing that the craving is just a voice and you have the final say. The voice might say you should eat that or you deserve a treat. But once you know that it's just the midbrain talking and that your prefrontal cortex is in charge, you can make decisions that align with your true goals. ABRT puts the power in your own hands. You're not waiting for willpower to kick in, and you're not relying on restrictive diets that leave you frustrated. You're making decisions with full awareness of what's happening in your mind, which gives you the real control. Now say this sentence again. I will never overeat again, and I will never change my mind. I will never overeat again, and I will never change my mind. Now pay attention to see what thoughts come up in your mind. Whatever comes up is the addictive voice. You don't have to react to it or believe it. It's just addictive voice. Doesn't mean anything. The addictive voice is ruthless. It has one single purpose, to make you over it. It doesn't care about your health, your goals, or how you feel about yourself. Its only focus is to get you to indulge in food so it can trigger the release of dopamine. This voice will stop at nothing. It's relentless in its pursuit of pleasure. Even when you think you've got it figured out, it's just hiding and it will come back when the time is right. What makes the addictive voice even more challenging is its sneaky nature. It knows how to hide. You might be going about your day feeling good and in control and suddenly the voice whispers something like Just one bite won't hurt or you deserve a treat after a long day. The addictive voice shows itself as innocent thoughts. It might sound like self-care or reward but its true intent is to lead you down the path of overeating. You might think you've overcame it, but the addictive voice doesn't just disappear. It can hide away for a while, but it will always come back. The voice is not your friend. It has no empathy. It doesn't care about you at all. It doesn't care about your health. It doesn't care about your happiness. It really doesn't care about anything. It just cares about you to overeat so that it can enjoy and have that immediate pleasure. While the addictive voice can seem persuasive, its motivation is purely selfish. It thrives on the rush of dopamine that comes from overeating. And that's it. There is no other purpose for the addictive voice. It will use other excuses and many excuses but it only has one purpose, which is overeating. But the thing is, just because the addictive voice is ruthless and sneaky doesn't mean it has to win. Recognizing it is the first step to taking back your control. When you hear the voice urging you to overeat, remind yourself that it's only doing its job, trying to trigger pleasure. But you can be aware of that and separate yourself from that voice. You don't have to do whatever the addictive voice tells you to do. You have the full power. Now let's take a step back and examine some of the wrong beliefs about food and overeating that many of us have internalized as a society. 
These beliefs can heavily influence our relationship with food and they can make it harder to resist the addictive voice. So it's important to talk about them. The first one is that food is for enjoyment, not just fuel. One of the most pervasive beliefs is that food is primarily for enjoyment. While it's true that food can bring pleasure and joy, it's essential to recognize that its purpose is fuel or body. The main purpose of eating is to fuel our bodies, nothing more. Society often equates eating with celebrations, comfort and reward. We hear phrases like, you deserve a treat, or food is the best part of the party. While enjoying food is a normal part of life, when we prioritize enjoyment over nourishment, we can easily lose sight of what our bodies truly need. This belief can lead to emotional eating, where we use food as a way to cope with feelings rather than to fuel our bodies. The next thing is the influence of the food industry. Our food environment plays a significant role in shaping our beliefs. Many businesses prioritize profit over health. They often promote unhealthy products as convenient or desirable, and they completely disregard the impact that they have on our health. They simply don't care about how healthy we are and how much we live. The only thing that they care is about the money that they're making. Fast food chains, snack manufacturers, and sugary beverage companies thrive on creating cravings and desires that keep us coming back for more. They exploit our natural inclination towards sweet and salty flavors, pushing unhealthy options that can lead to overeating and poor health. This creates a cycle where we feel trapped by choices that are often marketed as easy or pleasurable, while the truth is that these foods can have negative effects on our health. One of the most significant challenges that comes with applying AVRT is that we can't simply quit eating altogether. Food is a basic necessity for survival, while individuals struggling with alcohol addiction can choose to abstain completely, those with an overeating addiction face the challenge of needing to eat every day. This fundamental difference can make the journey toward recovery confusing and complex. For many people, the idea of quitting overeating feels impossible because at some point we all have to eat. This necessity creates a constant reminder of the very behavior we are trying to change, making it difficult to draw clear boundaries as we navigate our relationship with food. This necessity can lead to a sense of confusion and emotional conflict. You may find yourself thinking, if I have to eat, how can I possibly stop overeating? This internal struggle can make you feel like you are in a war between your need for nourishment and the addictive voice that urges you to indulge excessively. You have the power to choose how you respond to the voice when it tries to trick you into overeating. By applying AVRT techniques, you can learn to separate that voice from your true self and eat for few and not for fun or enjoyment. As we delve deeper into the journey of understanding overeating, it's important to define what exactly overeating is and how we can identify it in our daily lives so that we begin to recognize patterns that may contribute to our struggles with food. So what is overeating? Overeating refers to the consumption of more food than your body needs at a given time. This can occur during meals or snacks, and it often leads to feelings of discomfort, bloating, or guilt afterward. Eating more than the recommended serving sizes for meals or snacks is overeating. This can often happen 
when we serve ourselves larger portions than necessary or go back for seconds. Overeating also can be eating when you're not hungry. This includes instances where we eat out of boredom, stress, or habit, rather than actual hunger. We may find ourselves reaching for snacks or meals even when we don't feel hungry. Overeating is also ignoring satiety signals. Overeating can also happen when we disregard our body's signals that indicates fullness. Instead of stopping when we feel satisfied, we continue eating. And it's often driven by external cues like the availability of food or social pressure, like when we are in gathering or parties. To effectively identify when we are overeating, we can look for specific signs and patterns in our eating behavior. One of the signs is physical discomfort. If you regularly feel uncomfortably full or experience bloating after meals, this can be a strong indicator of overeating. The next one is emotional eating. Take note of when you eat out of stress, boredom, or emotional triggers rather than hunger. If you find yourself turning to food for comfort or distraction, this may indicate a pattern of overeating. The next one is eating past fullness. Pay attention to whether you continue eating even after you start to feel full. This often happens during social gatherings or while watching TV, where we might lose track of our body's signals. The next sign is guilt and regret. Reflect on how you feel after eating. If you frequently experience guilt or regret about your eating choices, it may suggest a tendency to overeat. Having a clear boundary for your eating habits provides a reference point to help you identify what is overeating and what is normal eating. To set a realistic and healthy goal for yourself, consider the following steps. First, calculate your daily caloric needs. Depending on factors such as your age, body measurements, activity level, and health goals, you can determine the number of calories you need to maintain a healthy weight. There are many online calculators available that you can use them to find this number. The second step is to establish your personal caloric limit. For example, let's say you determine that to maintain a healthy weight, you need approximately 1,500 calories a day. This number can be different for everyone, so it's important to figure out your own unique number based on your body, age, and other factors. The third step is to identify overeating thresholds. Once you know your daily caloric needs, you can define what overeating means for you. If you consume more calories than your established limits, that counts as overeating. When you set these clear boundaries, now you have a tool to combat the addictive voice. When it tries to convince you that it's okay to indulge beyond your limits, you can respond with factual information about your goals and your needs. In ABRT, we want to quit overeating once and for all. We don't want to do it halfway or just a little bit. It's important to fully commit to this change. To make this work, we need to be clear about our eating boundaries. It helps to know how many calories we need each day based on our age, body size, and activity level. This is not about restricting yourself or feeling bad. It's about understanding what overeating is for you. Knowing your number helps you identify when you are crossing the line. The addictive voice might tell you that it's okay to eat more, but you can push back. You can say, no, I have a goal and I'm sticking to it. By knowing your boundaries and being firm with yourself, you can take control of your eating habits and stop the cycle of overeating. This is how we truly quit overeating and make lasting changes in our life. 
When we eat especially foods that are high in sugar or fat, our brain releases a chemical called dopamine. This is the same chemical that gets released when we do something we enjoy, like laughing with friends or achieving a goal. It makes us feel good and that's why we often turn to food for comfort or pleasure. But this pleasure from eating is only temporary. The excitement fades quickly and soon we might find ourselves feeling empty again. This can lead us to reach for more food in a few minutes, trying to get that same high from dopamine. Each time we eat for that quick burst of pleasure, we are not truly satisfying our bodies. Instead, we are just masking our emotions or feeling a void. It's like putting a band-aid on a wound instead of healing it. This cycle can leave us feeling unsatisfied and can lead to overeating because we constantly seek that feeling of quick, fake happiness. Also, when we rely on food for happiness, we start to disconnect from what our bodies really need. Instead of listening to our hunger cues, we ignore them in favor of temporary pleasure. And this can create unhealthy habits, where we eat not out of need, but out of habit or cravings. The pleasure we chase through overeating comes at a cost. It can lead to physical discomfort, guilt, and even health issues. Finding joy in activities like spending time with friends or engaging in hobbies we like creates a real sense of satisfaction instead of this short-term fake pleasure from food. Many people fail at diets for several reasons. Here's why it often doesn't work. The first one is temporary changes. Most diets are about quick fixes or short-term changes. People might restrict their food for a while, but once they stop the diet, all habits come back. The next reason is strict rules. Diets often come with strict rules about what you can and you can't eat. This can feel overwhelming and make people feel deprived. The next reason is emotional eating. Many people use food to cope with emotions like stress or sadness. Diets don't address these emotional triggers. So when tough time hits, it's easy to turn back to food for comfort. Another one is lack of support. Making changes alone can be hard. If you don't have support from friends or family, it can feel lonely and people might struggle to stay committed. And the next reason is unrealistic expectations. Sometimes people expect quick results. When they don't see immediate changes, they may feel discouraged and give up. ABRT is different with dieting because it focuses on understanding and breaking the cycle of overeating rather than just restricting food. Instead of relying on strict rules, ABRT teaches you to recognize the addictive voice that tells you to overeat. This voice may say, just one more bite, or you deserve this treat. With ABRT, you learn to separate that voice from your true self. It helps you to understand that pleasure from eating is temporary and not worth the negative consequences. Based on AVRT, here is how to effectively separate yourself from the addictive voice. First, identify the addictive voice. Start by recognizing what the addictive voice speaks to you. This voice might say things like, you deserve to indulge, or just one more bite won't hurt. Acknowledge that these thoughts are not a reflection of your true self, but are driven by the addictive part of your brain. The second step is to label the voice. Give this voice a distinct name or title to help you see it as separate from who you are. For example, you might call it the overeater, or the temptation voice, or the addictive voice. By labeling it, you create a distance between yourself and that voice, allowing you to see it as an external influence. The next step is to use the statement technique. Practice the statement, I will never over it again and I will never change my mind. This reinforces your commitment to stopping overeating. 
When the addictive voice responds with doubt or fear, recognize that those responses are coming from the addictive voice. They are not from your true self. Recognize that the addictive voice is ruthless, persistent, and has one goal, to make you over it. It doesn't care about your health or your well-being. Understand that this voice is not powerful. It's just a collection of thoughts and urges trying to manipulate you into giving in. When the addictive voice speaks, Practice mindfulness by observing those thoughts without judgment. Remind yourself that these thoughts don't define you. Detach from the voice by acknowledging it but choosing not to react to it. You have the power to make your own decisions. Connect with your true self and your values. Reflect on your reasons for wanting to stop overeating and how you want to feel physically and emotionally. Remind yourself that you are in control and your true self is capable of making healthy choices. Create a mental image of your life without the addictive voice controlling your eating. Imagine how good it feels to be free from those urges. In AVRT, making a firm decision to stop overeating is about committing to never overeat again and standing by that commitment. When you make a solid decision, you create a mental boundary that separates you from the addictive voice that tries to lead you back to old habits. By stating that I will never over it again, you define your goals and clarify what you want to achieve. 